Hello guys, my name is Diego Pacheco and this is another Java video. Today I want to show you how we can work with Netty and Spring Boot in two different ways that we can do some integration tests, right? So let's get started. Um, let me share uh, my screen with you guys and then we can uh, take a look. Right, so here I'm going to open my IntelliJ. And then uh, I have simple Java project here. Basically, I'm using the latest uh, Spring Boot by now. I'm using Maven. If you take a look here, I'm using the version 231 release. Um, you know, by default, Spring Boot is on Tomcat. So if you if you want to use Netty, um, you basically just uh, instead of uh, use a starter web, that's what most people do. You just do web flux, right? And that's it, you have netted. There's nothing else you need to do, literally, right? Just add the word web flux instead of web here, and then that's it, you have netted. So as you can see, I have actuator and, um, uh, you know, starter test for testing, and um, also uh, I Spring Boot Maven plugin, all right? So in order to run, but, but uh, that's it. There's no big deal here, right? Um, then I have an application, right, as you might expect. So it's a Spring Boot application, enabling auto configuration. I'm componenting scans. So that's my base packages. There I'll go to Kong, GitHub, Diego Pacheco, Sandbox, Spring. As you can see here, all my code is under that root base folder. Then I'm running the application. I'm just, you know, having a bin here to say, you know, that, that the application started. So I can hit and run here, right? And you can see my application is uh, fully running. And you can see it runs with net. You can see net is started here, right? And here is uh, my message, right? Um, it's also possible for us to run this on the console, right? So if you do Maven uh, Spring Boot um, run, then uh, we can have the same effect, right? And then uh, the application is running. So we're going to keep it uh, running here, right? So now let's take a look uh, on the source code, right? So I basically have a service, right? I have a greeting service, uh, is at service annotation. And then here I'm using a mono, right? So that's uh, reactive programming. So I'm gonna return a mono for a string. I greet, I receive a name. And I just, you know, do mono just, right? To, to create the mono. And I concatenate greeting with the name and that's it for the service. For the controller, I basically uh, have a greeting controller, right? It's a REST controller. Um, I'm, I'm mapping to the path slash grid. And then there's a get uh, mapping here, right? Uh, as you can see, I'm returning a mono as well, right? Um, and then basically I'm delegating to the service, right? And you can see here I'm injecting the service via constructor uh, injection in Spring, right? Um, let's test this code, right? So let's try to do some uh, CURL, right? Um, and as you can see, it works, right? I can put some of my cat's names here, right? Um, and just, it works perfectly, right? Great. Um, I can do a client, right? So uh, it's possible to create a web client. So basically, um, you instantiate a web client, right? And this web client, uh, you do by web client dot create, and then you pass the URL. So often um, you should, you want to receive this as a config property and ideally as environment variable, right? Because this will uh, change and you want to make sure is uh, correct and proper. Then I have a grid method where I just receive a string and header and string, so I'm abstracting everything. But what I do, I'm building a, a client with the get method, right? Because it's a REST call. I'm passing my path, right? I want to do a slash grid and I want to pass a name. And then I'm passing the name as parameter. Then I'm saying, you know, the media type is text plain. And then I'm flatting map the result and I'm doing body to mono to a string, right? And blocking, so I'm getting a string as back. Um, I have some unit testing. I can show how we can use this client. Often you would move this client to a different project because um, you want to have like a server project and a client project. But I just show you guys how how easy it is to do create a client. So there's two two ways we can test this. Uh, we can use our client or we can use the test um, abstractions from Spring. So first let's look um, uh, how we do the abstractions, right? So um, 
here there's two ways all right and i'm going to show a third way for you guys so basically when when you run this test you need to say extends with all right and then we say it's a spring extension and then you can use this spring boot test where you can have this environment where you say spring boot environment to handle port and spring boot will randomically create a port for you and then what you do all right um you basically uh, have an instance of the web test client and uh, i'm gonna have another one which is my uh a specific client I created I show you guys like here right so that's why you see two different ones because I want to show in a generic way and using the client I created that's why I'm injecting both here right so if I do a generic I just you know use the DSL here right so you see I'm doing a get I'm passing the URI I want to say uh, greet Diego um, and basically I compare the result if it's equals to greeting Diego all right and then here I'm using my client. So first thing I'm doing um, in this case here, I'm running the application, right? Because when I run this test, so right now, let me stop here, all right? So I'm gonna stop what I have on the console, great. So this test here, all right, is relying on the abstraction here, Spring Boot tests, right? And, and basically injecting a random port for us. So because we are using this client, as you can see, I don't need to pass URL. I just pass straight my mapping, right? And that's good. I don't need to worry about uh, ports or anything, you know, it's a good abstraction. However, here I'm using the client. And if you take a look on my client code, right? I'm looking for localhost 8080, right? So I really need to boot up the application. And I do that by running the application class. That's done by this line here when I just say application.main because it's a Java class and then I'm running the application, all right? Then I can call the client, greet Diego, and I can do a session. So let's run both tests and see they are working just fine, all right? You're going to see Spring booting up two times because it's one of based on the abstraction and other one is based by me here booting up, all right? So I'm just showing two different methods of testing for you guys. And there's a third one we can do, all right, which is this one here, all right? So again, I'm using um, the stands with, again, annotation and using spring extension. But now, as you can see, there's a different annotation here, right, which is called um, web flux text test, where I'm passing my controller, right? So that's the controller, the greeting controller you saw before, right? And here, again, I get a client, uh, right? And I'm, I'm getting my service, right? So I can mock my service now, right? So I'm I'm just saying that the, the result should be greeting Diego, all right? So so I mock it a mono, and then I'm, I'm doing a Mokito expression, say when someone called the service greet with Diego, the result should be this uh, mock it mono greeting Diego, right? That's, that's the mocking part. Then I do the client, all right? Um, and uh, basically, um, uh, this client here, you're gonna be using my market, right? Because I inject this market here. In this case, it's not really calling the real service, right? So if I run this, you're gonna see it just works, right? And here is how you can do mocking, all right? So basically, that's it, guys. I hope you like it. Uh, just to keep in mind one uh, important thing, all right? Although it's very easy to use Spring Boot and Netty, you need to mind that several dependencies here, all right, because of that. And sometimes it's just easier to use Netty straight away, all right? You're gonna have much less dependencies, right? If you are using Spring Boot under a service, it's fine. However, if you're gonna add on a shared labor, be careful because you're gonna have lots of dependencies and that could lead to binary coupling. So that's it, guys. I hope you like it. See you next time. Bye.